All right, and welcome to the P114 Filmmakers Podcast. Uh, this is Season 1, Episode 9. I'm Jesse Knight. I'm Aiden Ford. I'm Randall Lanier. And we're here to talk about all things film-related. And today we're actually going to try to change it up a little bit. Of course, we divert, and I'm really bad for non-sequiturs. But um, we are going to try and talk about our own sort of personal experiences on set right now. Uh, a little bit about the process. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about the generating of the idea and how that balloons into maybe a script. And then from there you go into, you know, our experiences in like production and actually making a piece. And then we can uh, maybe kind of aim to, to go into post-production after that. So maybe we'll keep it kind of like that. We'll talk about idea generation first. Everybody sort of talk about that, then writing, then the production and post-production, and then what the heck do you do with it once you're once you're finished? What was the reason for doing it in the first place, and that kind of stuff? And as I imagine, we're going to divert into talking about other movies and TV shows as we go. Um, maybe we could try to divert that to making of or featurette type pieces, but you know, I'm not really a dictator, so we'll just sort of go where nature takes us so that's kind of it um i guess i'll start us off real quick by the idea generation <laughs> to me that could be maybe the most all at once like exciting part of making a film and i bet you'll find an excuse to say that about every phase of it but when you there's nothing like when you get like a really good idea you see it or may and then it starts taking shape with me the initial first idea sometimes isn't that powerful it might like, uh, I don't know if I've seen it, but my first feature, F3, like, it just started when I took a camera home. At the time, it was kind of a new deal, and I just started taking, like, weird shots. And then I started thinking about that, like, well, I could really actually make a real movie, you know, maybe utilizing myself as the main actor and kind of going on from there. I did many things wrong, though, like no script and, and things like that. And so it just ended up being this kind of, I can call it an art piece, but... It's not a point A, B, C kind of story at all. Um, people kind of end up being kind of polarized by it. But that idea generation, it took a while to become what it became. And then there's other things I did where uh, another one called the Orbs that I worked on, I, I started with other ideas first. Before I got to Orbs, I was thinking maybe it's a group of scientists working at this, uh, like, um, like a... a what is it where you got like plants being grown and they're in these like uh, arboretum. arboretum type areas, something like that. Maybe it's like for research and study or it's all these greenhouses and things. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of like, that's kind of an interesting uh, place to have a movie happen. I could come up with something weird there. So I kind of started writing some ideas about that. But then I just, it got to be like, well, this is going to cost more than I think I need to do think, okay, first, Jesse, what are your limitations? Well, I can get a room and I can get one or two actors. And so then I went from there, you know, almost coming up with the limitations first and then figuring out what the story is. And there have been certainly when I was younger in film school, screenwriting class, you just write something and there can be all over the place and stuff. You don't have to worry about limitations so much mm -hmm. and, and that. But, uh, you know, generating an idea, getting with a couple of people of like-minded people and talking about something and shaping something. Some of the stuff I'm working on is that way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what about you guys? What, what are what are some of your experiences with just with idea generation? Um, Randall, well, you want to go? Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> being here as you know, of course, the first time I ever really did stuff was that that editing class we uh, did. Uh, uh, my first editing class I did where uh, we did that turkey movie. That's the uh, <laughs> Attack of the Kill of the Turkeys. That was our first class, uh, first thing I did. Um, and we basically uh, we were assigned to do a movie or whatever. And as a group, well, I can't remember how many we were. It was like a five, six, something like that of us. And uh, we were did a, we were assigned to do a movie and. I was out that day that we were assigned with groups, whatever. So I was already in a group when I came into the next class, and uh, then we were um, then uh, he, uh, one of them had already wrote a script for it, and so we went over the script, and he gave me all the lines. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm assuming that because the, I was out that day that we did, a, I was having to do the lines, but. I was a teacher, so it kind of made sense that I was a little older than all the rest of them. So I was kind of more of the the teacher of the 
story so that was the uh where i had to do it and um i loved doing that i loved going through the script of it. i mean really that was i mean i was me and the guy who wrote it uh went through the script more than the other people around us they were kind of paying attention a little bit but they we were kind of going through it and i loved that that process of just you know going through the script okay this we can do this we can do that we maybe we won't want to add that on but it, it just you know and I could I told him because I wasn't an actor I'm not an actor whatsoever and I told him I said we've got to cut some of this down the dialogue down because I don't I can't remember this stuff uh, as an actor would and I'm not an actor to begin with so I mean it, cutting it down was going to be uh, but he didn't have a ton of act, uh, dialogue, but it was more than I wanted to deal with, so we cut it down. And, uh, <clears throat> and going through that process of filming and doing things like that, I mean, I learned, you know, we, about, like, doing shots from different angles and doing, you know, everything, and, uh, it was really a fun time. I really enjoyed, I, that was probably the, you know, one of the fun times I had here. And, uh, we uh, then I'm you know of course going to uh, writing my own scripts and that kind of you know spurred me on to do writing my own scripts and then had ideas and then I did that one uh, well I did one another movie for oh golly what did I do I guess I did it for more sound class than I did anything paranoia uh, was mostly for sound class I think it was for sound class but then I kind of made it into editing too or whatever put it together for editing too. And, uh, so I was, uh, I was, um, that was a different one because I was kind of being in charge, more in charge of that one. And I had to write all the, you know, said I wrote the whole script and I had to be a actor in it too. And then I had to, um, like Jesse said, there's kind of limitations you have, even though this was school at this point in time, we had less people I could depend on, I should say. So I kind of had to, um, Chris was the only other guy in my class with me. We had another guy, but I didn't, couldn't depend on him. And uh, the, uh, we were gonna shoot it in the day that we shot, Chris called in and then said he couldn't make it. But luckily the, the, sec, uh, the, the second year students were here. And y'all, they were gonna do something, but then, then one of them didn't show up. The person who was in charge of them, they, well, they were gonna do something. So they couldn't do anything so they helped me do make the movie and uh so they did uh, help me shoot the movie so that was a good thing and uh it was that wasn't planned at all that just happened that day or whatever for as much as making the go thing goes my sister and my niece again you know, i could t kind of depend on them because my niece is not uh she's homeschooled so they have a little bit you know free uh, freer freer reign on what they can do and what they can do um, but they have other things too they're involved in but um so but that was that was a good thing and uh jesse was played a part in that movie too but uh small part and we uh i mean i was because like i said you're limited to like you said to who you can tr not even to the point of who, who you can depend on it's just who you can get <laughs> it's almost to the point of you know and that's why like you when i said to write scripts i gotta figure out hey who i got <laughs> who i can do this part or whatever that's why a lot of my movies have been limited amount of people <laughs> actors in the movie because it's like i can't you know like i said i there you know i have to deal with dialogue too and i have to do deal with being director and you know an actor and figuring out how things are done for it. So, anyway, uh, that's you know that was paranoia. And then of course I did Ghost Girl, which basically I had to do again. Which I had a few th more. You know, Quaid helped us out with that one too. And uh, um, let's see, Doc was here during that time too. So uh, Doc helped out. So I was able to have a few people help out with that one a little more and my niece had to had a bigger speaking part which I, that's me i wrote the script so i made her have her be you know a bigger speaking part so she's not necessarily an actor either you know we're not any of us are not actors but but she had more of a speaking part and she's kind of with her being homeschool i think she kind of is limited to uh you know the her thing you know is being very out there outspoken type of stuff so uh so but 
luckily Jesse helped out, uh, helped out with that too because I wasn't sure really. I had to make sure to cut some, <laughs> maybe cut some things, or whatever, in the dialogue to kind of, because I wrote I wrote for her character to be older speaking than, on, but I did that on purpose because I wanted her. She's a ghost, so she's living on a higher plane. So I feel like she could be speaking to us like we were children, which I didn't realize until after I was making the movie that hey, that's what I'm doing. You know, it's having yeah. her be a parent to us or whatever type thing. And I would have, I, I had. Th thought about that at the time of making the movie, I would have thought, okay, let me just tell her this is what's going on, you know, da da da, you know, that kind of thing. And I didn't do that. And I, I'm like, I'm kind of like, uh, kind of pissed me off. But anyway, uh, that I didn't do that. Um, but that's my fault. Uh, so, but anyway, that's that's what I've dealt with dealing with the movie. But I like writing a script and I like getting that, seeing how that flows out and. I can't remember it all. I'll save my life. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm yeah. screaming at myself because I'm like, okay, why? Yeah, who who wrote worst. this crap? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the damn worst. Yeah. So I, I like, I'm like, and so, but the the turkey movie I did make a tension of memorizing my part. Memorize, I memorize those lines. I made a factor of memorizing my lines because I didn't want to mess up any. This was my first foray in this situation, so I didn't want to piss off people saying, oh God, we got to take. Four more takes because he couldn't remember his lines or whatever type thing, and I was there pretty on point with him to memorize my lines at least. I mean, I wasn't no great actor by any means, but um, but at least memorizing my lines that was my you know that was my thing that was my intention of doing that because I didn't fully know everybody even then. By that time in the semester, I still didn't know everybody, and I didn't really know them that well. But I, like I said, I didn't want to be the one to mess up the movie or whatever type thing, or the one to have problems or whatever type thing because he can't remember the freaking lines but the other movies I kind of was lax in doing it <laughs> of memorizing my lines but uh anyway um but that's what um that's what been a lot of my situation with this the school and everything like that and I'm content trying to continue writing but uh we'll see what we can do cool but, cool uh, so, Aiden, what are uh, <clears throat> what's been your experience as far as like generating the idea, maybe going into a little bit of the screenwriting process and that kind of stuff? But but definitely with the with the idea generation, how does it happen for you? How it, the process starts for me? <clears throat> um, I'm kind of backwards type of person. I've I've always been this way. Still, I will always be this way. Um, I don't do things the way they should be done. <laughs> Not at first, at least. Uh, so at first, what I was doing, I never wrote a script until I started um, uh, intro to film class with Jesse and you. <laughs> you got me doing it. And I didn't really think it was that important. I mean, I knew it was important, but I didn't think it was as important as it is, actually. Um, and helpful. Gosh, so helpful. I usually just, when I first started, I always do music videos because they were the easiest. You didn't have to have any dialogue. You didn't need sound equipment. And you could throw this awesome song because, you know, if you sit and listen to music all day, you're always playing something in your head so you can create it. You know, it's like, hey, I get to create my own movie, my own little short video of something I've thought of a million thousand times listening to the song. Um, so that's usually how mine started. And uh, I'd get my friend Faison, who is always willing to help me and just, you know, film and we would just shoot and have the best time of our lives doing it but then I, when I got more involved with it and classes became more of just this fun activity that I was doing and everything I learned became a part of me I learned a lot about script writing and more so just pre like planning out for this being more adding more to it giving it more of a more than just music in the background, which also enhances its level of hardness and how technical it can get, which people don't realize how much it actually is. Even a three minute video took me nine hours to shoot and get ready for, and weeks of preparing for it. And, you know, I, my, I even spent money on it that I didn't have, so it's like you know there's a there's a process to it, um, you know. And as far as the the before you even pick up that camera and shoot, you've got 
so you've got to get that script. You've got to get your characters together. You've got to make sure they're available. And these days, you've got to plan where you're going to be shooting at. Um, where are you going to get your equipment? Are you going to feed your actors? Depending on who you are, of course. Uh, which is what I had to do, wanted to do, and I even had to, you want to do that, you know, because you're a team. There's a process like no other with this, and it's more than what people think it is. It's not just you pick up a camera and you go. Some people, it, 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 you can make it that way if you want, but if you're trying to successfully do this and learn the film industry ways, you're, you're going to have to do the hard parts too. But I also do like just picking up a camera and going, which can be super fun and you can get really creative ideas through doing that. I worked on a lot of things of my own, not a lot compared to some people, but for myself, in the last year I've worked on numerous things that I've created that I wanted to exist that I made exist and I'm super proud of them. Like uh, the one that I did recently was um, The Last Nightmare. And I had a gaffer, a uh, makeup artist, two actors, three actors, my mom, um, and two students from my school that I, go, that I go to school with. And they're phenomenal. They did a great job. And then my makeup artist and my friend, who is my sound guy, sometimes you got to pluck the people you already know and use them because either they're going to do it for really cheap or for free. And when you're, whether you're rich or not, you should, you know, you should always get a good deal like that. So... Yeah, I created this movie, and we created this movie, and I wrote it. It was a very short script because I'm not a writer, like Jesse and Randall here, but I enjoy the idea of it. I just don't do it. I think that movies are like living a whole life in the matter of the time that it makes to, takes to make the movie. It feels like I'm living an entire lifetime in a movie process of making it that I did that kind of backwards but you can get the point like it's like I'm working millions of jobs whether I'm the camera person or not I am doing a million other things and it takes so much energy but it's so fun because you're you're creating something that sadly some people will never understand or appreciate as much as you did um, even the people that probably worked on it with you won't but at least somebody appreciates it. It's like, you know, when you have a baby. Not everybody's gonna love your baby, but you love your baby. And that's all that matters. So, and that's the way I look at my uh, movies and the things that I work on that aren't even mine. You know, I take pride in them and I love them and I love the camera, the camera and me. We, we've come very far. And um, I remember when I first started uh, film school, I wanted to be an editor. I, it was really hard for me when I started film school to actually want to come to film school because I was scared that I was going to look at as the weirdo because I didn't know what I wanted to be. But when I actually came here, no one, there was a lot of people that didn't know what they wanted to do. And they still don't. And they've been here for a really long time. It doesn't matter because it's all, it all matters, you know? And, but I do know that being a cinematographer is really where the passion is inside of me, you know? Being the person that everybody calls to get the exposure right really makes you feel good because you know it and you appreciate it and you love it. I appreciate the lens, I appreciate the frame, the I appreciate the, the camera body and the batteries and all that crap. <laughs> so with that being said, you know, there is a huge process to filmmaking. Even everything that I have said, I have passed so many different opportunities to speak on, you know, so if you want to do it, prepare for it. But yeah, that's my first little thing to say about it. I think you bring up a lot of interesting points, especially with like wearing a lot of hats. And I think that definitely has something to do with maybe where we're at. We are in not the biggest of urban environments, I would say, to say the least, you know. There isn't a huge filmmaking um, industry here mm. in our state of North Carolina and in this general area, you know. There's just not a lot of anything. Here you got a few small towns and, and stuff like that. So to make it as a freelance videographer is quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, right down the street, though, six hours away, we've got Atlanta, which uh -huh. is becoming a mega industry location. And six hours is pretty close, honestly. Yeah, it's it a lot is. closer than California. Yeah, you know, that's for sure. At least for here or New York. Or, I mean, you know, to New York, you you really like. Do you want to live in New York? You have to make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Cali's a little easier to live in, but uh, 
but they're both equally horribly expensive. <laughs> I don't um, Atlanta, <laughs> not so bad. Uh, cost of living in Atlanta is about maybe a little higher in some things, but a pretty close to here it is. I mean, you can live outside of Atlanta. It's yeah, and it's not that bad. Like 45 minutes away. Cost of gas yeah. may be a tiny bit cheaper in Atlanta. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia, the Georgia, Georgia State, uh, Georgia mm -hmm. State uh, their gas prices go up. There is better than here. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. When I lived there, it was 85 cents a gallon. I was like, Ooh, what, wait. What year was this? <laughs> that was a while ago. Okay. It was... <laughs> Dinosaurs are walking when I, the earth. When I moved down there, it was, well, it was $1.11 average price here. It was probably in the 90s down there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that was that. But, of course, this was, right. this was in 93 when I moved right. down there. So, but Why I mean, did you originally just, move down there again? Hmm? Why did you originally move down there? personal stuff okay and uh so yeah that's uh well i mean my parents lived, moved down there basically just to, but i mean i moved down there to with them and uh so but i was this was i was still in college at the time and i'm still young and didn't couldn't i was only in a part-time job at the video store or whatever so i couldn't really do a lot of staying here or whatever for that reason but the opportunities were down there were bigger opportunities too I just didn't take them because I was I was young. That's a whole different story right, right. there. But it, <laughs> I was just too too uh, angry. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about um, and I, and I, at some point because he brought it up. It doesn't have to be right now because he was talking. But I want to talk about um, our experiences at the movie stores because they actually pertain a lot to me to how people um, feel about movies in general. Not the movie making process, yeah. but just movies and right. just why why we exist for them. Yeah, we I mean, exist for the people that walked into Blockbuster, for the people that walked into the places, the mom and pop, yeah. you know things, and even the people that go to Redbox and are on Netflix and that are yeah. watching this right now mm -hmm. because we're entertaining them with a camera. Right, and we got a few people that watch us. Yeah, not, so it's kind of and the ones that don't say they watch us. Thank <laughs> you for watching us. Yeah. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, we matter too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, idea generation. Idea generation is always exciting. Um, both of y'all brought up two very great, totally true points, is that if you're going to make the film, it's really damn important that you think about what your limitations are. You know, that can dictate what the story may be. And all that you know so you look at what's available to you and then piecing together something that you can do with that like right now um, I'm always got ideas for movies and this may sink or whatever but I've got an idea now because you know I've been kind of frustrated artist I've been d happily shooting and editing a lot of other people's material which a lot of a feel is mine you know like a surrogate mother you know it's mm -hmm. like I feel like these are my babies too it's just sort yeah. of how does you put yourself into it but also um, my ego, what have you, or whatever. I want to also make my own stuff, you know. So I'm thinking about what are things I can do for absolutely free. Well, one is I can keep it present day. Don't have to worry about weird costumes and stuff like that. Use whatever house I do. Maybe center it to one, two locations. Maybe one main location, and then if you have to, a few others. But you're kind of confined to that. It's good to have these kind of things. And then think about one main actor you're with the whole time. So mainly it's just you having to deal with them and their performance. You want somebody good so they can really give this performance. It's kind of dialogue driven and that kind of thing. But also um, it's probably going to be a horror film. Horror kind of sell, is an easy sell. I may not make a lot of money on it, but... I can have this person basically who's having all these crazy ideas, but then they're also committing murder. Kind of interesting. You just kind of have that slant to it. I don't want to give too much of it away, but it's just sort of thinking about that. Then I find myself going all kinds of places where I haven't gone before. Like, I'm a strong proponent of being anti um, stock footage, right? Mm -hmm. um, just because I believe in, well, lazy filmmaker, go and make your own shots, you know? Quit using other people's I hate stuff. That crap. <laughs> but. There's some instances like, uh, sort of thinking about the same movie, um, you know, I would like to have all these, this footage of a trapdoor spider doing its thing. Well, I could try to figure it out, try to get a, a terrarium built with a trapdoor spider in it and show all these shots I want, or guess what? 
hundreds of people have already done this footage. You can find it for sale legitimately at stock footage sites. So then I'm thinking about, well, it'd be really interesting. They're shot perfectly. What, what am I going to do that's going to bring any magic to these? Nothing. It's not yours. It's, that's my, that's I got my it. I got that. But like, I don't have access to these spiders. You do you do, yeah. I don't have any of that. And I've kind of already gone... I've kind of the ship's already sailed even when I was a staunch anti stock footage because I'm totally using NASA stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And all of this, the nice thing about NASA stills and video footage is it's free for any of us to use. Oh. It's uh, royalty free. Mm -hmm. Everything they've got. They you know, really, really good, high quality mm -hmm. stuff you can use in your in your products. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. NASA doesn't, you know. Yeah. They don't need our royalties, you know. They're extremely rich. I want to read a little more about it, but um, mm. and they recently did a new update to that release catalog. There's a lot of stuff. I have a friend, uh, Steve Van Buren, who uh, has been working on this documentary for gosh, is it decades now? But it's about Saturn, and it's built with all these stills of Saturn from the flyby, and he's done these interesting. They're almost animations, but it's just all these stills because you have the, I forget if, which, if it was a Voyager or one of them that went by and it took all these stills and you can put them together and you can kind of go around the planet and all these really neat kinds of things, you know, and sure. in orbs, I've had rockets going up into space and I was wondering some of the stuff I grabbed, uh, the CGI is actually done by a buddy of mine and made really good friends with this guy named Dom. Well, Money Vang. Money is a nickname, but that's what he goes by. Uh, he lived over here at the time, and he was doing a lot of uh, CGI and After Effects and Maya kind of work. And um, he's one of the few people I did, so I got him involved in that project. And he did all the special effects shots of the rocket. And it was fun to work with him and figure out what is the design, what would a black ops rocket really look like. So it got a little few darker colors to it. We even have a limb lander that he built that lands. And it made it sort of this dark gray, kind of stealthy looking kind of thing. It was fun to develop, like, what does the technology look like and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did the whole rocket launch, the separating, the, it, the, the, uh, the spacecraft going around the moon, and then uh, the uh, lander, and all of that kind of stuff. It was really, uh, I couldn't have asked for something better. I never had that done before so it was really a, a fun experience working with that guy on that and he, he of course went on to LA and he worked he's works with a lot of the DC television show series is like Supergirl oh, is and, yeah yeah, yeah Supergirl yeah yeah, yeah and right. at the, yeah he shows that so I bet he does for that company oh. I bet he works on shots for a lot of the different shows uh -huh. but he always posts like stuff he's he loves the stuff which mm -hmm. helps he loves superheroes and stuff and he gets to work with it you know, it's really oh, that's good. Awesome. I remember getting a little non sequitur here. Well, it kind of deals with it. But I remember when he was job hunting out there, and it was all these things, including ILM, which Lucas Arts, all mm. of this like, oh. oh. <laughs> but um, he got the job with this company first. But the day after, he got the acceptance from Lucas Arts. He's like, oh. oh. God. But still, you know, it's still this company's huge too. Mm, yeah. I mean, you know, you think of Arrow and Flash and Supergirl and all these DC titles that are yeah. still running strong. Mm. Arrow's been on what, like 20 years? Not yeah. quite, but it's been so it's going, seventh uh, season now. Seventh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be more, but it seems like more. But still, seven yeah, is a seven, long time. For television yeah. show, it is a long time. And they run a lot of episodes. Mm -hmm. It's more, you're getting more than like 12 or 13. Yeah, they, I think. They, they run about 22. 22 episodes, which is, that's full time work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so it's kind of neat. So I just utilized who was around me. I, going back further into earlier films, um, I had a friend that was in music school. He's a violinist. And he's an artsy guy. He could make up his own little ditties and stuff. So I came, have him come over, and I used to record, you know, make up something. <laughs> and he'd make up all these different little things. Mm -hmm. I'd record it, and then I'd put it into, like, the, I would think, early version of Final Cut or whatever I was working on at the time. I would do things to the music and stretch it out and slow it down and add effects mm -hmm. to it and just kind of do it, uh, kind of scored it as I went kind of thing and, and I've done other stuff like I'd play make noise or a little bit of music what have you on my own I had a keyboard and electric guitar I would make tones and sounds with those in my early films too I just did everything and I got like a real neat kind of like 
feeling from it. You know, it was really fun. Especially, I look at the film now and I can tear it apart, but uh, it was an early film I did in grad school called uh, Static. But I was just I remember making that movie. I'd never had that much fun making a movie since then because it was this new world. It was sort of like like when Anne Rice, this is cheesy as hell, but when Anne Rice describes a, van, a new vampire who's looking at the world for the mm -hmm. first time with their vampire eyes, that's kind of how I felt. Yeah. I felt like this, wow, this omnipresence kind of feeling that was wonderful, you know? And I've been trying to capture that same thing since then. That's okay, I've gotten better as a craftsperson, you know? And so it's, it's, it's all the long game, you know, which is fine. But that was a nice uh, early perk that I think that experience I had in making that movie by myself. And I brought in people to be the actors and stuff. Uh, that certainly added fuel to the fire to keep me going. That's been 23 plus years, you know. Do you still have I'm doing this. It's static. You can see it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's on my uh, it's on my YouTube and my Vimeo. I may have hidden it, but it's still there. I, I showed static to a few people. To Randall and uh, Nate were in class, I think, when I showed it. black and white with gas oh, mask yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah that's pretty, that's that was one of the first thing. ones I, I ever did. Were you, you in know? it? My hands in it. <laughs> I have a POV shot and I have a hand of a mutant, I call it, grabbing the device, which is a total oh, yeah. MacGuffin, and uh, I did that. Yeah. But I just used my friend. Good handwork. And, yeah, you know, <laughs> holding the camera and doing this, you know. Nice. And it was uh, all in 16 millimeters, so it was film camera stuff, and I made my own costumes, and I designed it to be like, well, if this person didn't show up, this other person can wear the costume, and it <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter, yeah, yeah. you know, it's my gorilla suit, you know, not really gorilla suit, but... Uh, <clears throat> that kind of thing and I built some sets like uh, just uh, okay, I built a wall and I got these weird dental chairs that I bought for cheap at a scrap yard and um, had these I like gas masks aesthetically so I just had those on all my characters and just had a blast making that there's a script somewhere but I think it kind of <laughs> I don't know. I I I, I, can't, I think that file got corrupted, so I can't really compare what I had written in the script to what um, to what I had right. in in the finished part. Um, I think being in art school definitely helped me, at least with like that. I knew I could build stuff. I knew I could make stuff look a certain way. Even in art school, I was still playing around with cameras. I'd build these sculptures, like almost miniatures, and I'd take the camcorder and kind of move it through them and stuff, and I really, I'd watch it all the time. This is back in the tape days, too, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. it's kind of interesting. And talking about tape, you guys both worked at video stores, which you always hear about the stories of Tarantino and maybe a few other directors that worked at these video stores, and they got their education that way, like you guys mm -hmm. totally did. You know, you started just eating, devouring movies, mm -hmm. you know? And I did too, I didn't work at a store, but I did have a job um, where I had no one around me. It was in the middle of nowhere. I worked at WSPA um, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was living at a cousin had this sort of farmhouse to the side. They had moved to another house and they were in the process of getting it ready to sell, but I could live there. And um, so I lived there and then I'd work at a TV station. But what I did on my downtime was I hit up, a, I think it was called a movies or something. Yeah, it was a yeah. chain. Yeah. I'd go in there and just load up with movies. I especially was aiming for like all the foreign stuff. Anything different I could find. I just grabbed them, went home. I was watching four or five movies a day and then going to work and coming back and watching more and stuff. So just That's all I did. I, I worked, I slept and ate and watched movies. That's all I did. And, and uh, Sounds about right. I watched a lot of that. Then I went to film school after that. You know, but I'd had How a knowledge base up. I was uh, 20, gosh, I was probably somewhere between 23 and I think I, it, it's all kind of hazy for me because I am 44 now, but it was uh, <laughs> early 20s, I guess, let's just My say age. that. Yeah, yeah. And so I was just eating it like he, there was the internet really wasn't what no, it is now no. um so at that time i was looking at tons of magazines mm -hmm. like film comment filmmaker movie maker uh, american cinematographer uh, cinefix um cineast uh, all these different movie making magazines a lot were sort of talked about hard to find indie stuff and and foreign stuff you know um so i knew a lot about that going into film school and uh 
in film school, the one I went to is a little more theory based and that kind of thing, but they had tons of equipment and it might have been that I was a graduate student, but I was right away shooting and stuff. I know people that were undergrads there and maybe they weren't allowed to touch cameras for a while, which was a problem, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I went in and just started making movies. Like, I didn't care if it was for a class or not. <laughs> as long as I could find a way to check stuff out and to make it, I learned. You know, I learned a lot by doing that. And it was a program where, really, it's kind of up to you what you want to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could just sit back and not do anything, and maybe just through being a good test taker and a good writer, you can get through it. But I was there to make movies, so by gosh, that's what I really focused on. And I would make a movie, and I'd get my other friends who were willing to to help me, and in turn, I would work on theirs, and it was this, this sort of shared effort, you know. And early on, you learn how to communicate and how to do that. And also, I had to teach as a graduate teaching assistant. That was my first foray into that. And I was a complete introvert, so that was a hard, really hard thing to overcome. But guess what? On a set, if you want to make a movie and you mm -hmm. want to direct, you got to be a communicator. you got to learn yeah. to talk. Yeah. So it helped me out with that. Teaching has actually helped me become a better director mm -hmm. and a better communicator. Because you really got to, if you want the thing to be what you want it to be, you got to, unless you're doing it yourself, you got to express it to the people yeah. who are there to help you. Yeah. You know, you've got to yeah. make it clear to them. And I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I well, wasn't, and with that movie, I wasn't. I regret that now. That I yeah, couldn't. but I mean, that's that's part of the learning stuff. Early on, I didn't know really anything. There wasn't. Yeah. And where I went to film school, those teachers weren't all filmmakers. Some were sort of filmmakers. Some had done a few things, but they weren't. And a couple were actually actively working on things, which is nice to see. It was. It gave you a boost, and you went and you knew they were working on their own thing alongside right. you. You're working on your thing. You could talk back and forth. A really good, good thing there. But a lot of them were just there to be teachers and and, and that kind of stuff. So that was a limit, but also you know you make the best of it. They had all mm -hmm. this gear. Um, they had a big green screen that they just used for like the news and stuff. But I'm like, I'm gonna figure out how to do composite shots. I see in. Uh, and Final Cut Pro version 1.25 or whatever. It's on, you know, it's 10 plus now. <laughs> but uh, it was, uh, I saw a little filter that said key or color key or something like that. I'm like, oh, or it said green screen or something. And then I just started filtering around with it. I started taking shots. And then I started realizing uh, I can start doing some what's called composites where you take different passes using a green screen. You can put them together to make one image. You know, and I started learning early on, but no one was there really teaching. I just kind of self-taught as I went there. That's the best that you appreciate it more. Yeah. In some ways. I mean, sometimes you want someone to teach you and say, oh, do that. Help. Yeah, yeah. And it was great. And I got to make art in that I was building all these miniatures. I built a little miniature city for my master's thesis, Cancer Dreams, there. And I had a great time doing that. And I had it up on these sort of, like, risers, and I had places where I could just put the... I put the camera, the 16 millimeter camera, on a skateboard on a on a um, <laughs> put a sandbag on the on the skateboard, and I just slowly moved it through. You know, so I have all these sort of like tracking shots using cool. models and stuff. I had a ship I built, so I put a pole and I attached the pole to the skateboard. And I put the the ship on the end of that, so I had it like sort of slowly moving into this like hangar where it's supposed to park, you know, in it and stuff. And I just thought of all kinds of stuff. I had a great time, you know. And at that time, too, I was like, oh, yeah, next year I'm going to make a feature, and then I'm going to be Tarantino or, Will, or or Kevin Smith or one of these guys that were bl just blowing up at that time. It was like, oh, make a feature, you're famous, you know. Yeah. But I had to get past that because that obviously didn't happen, and, and things change, and it's hard to make stuff to get out there. Um, I'm lucky to have made stuff as good as it is now, and, and I can get into small festivals, and I've slowly been building up an identity and stuff but it's a long game and you can tell I just d totally diverted off of what I was originally talking about at the beginning but that's No, but okay. you're explaining to you, us and other people that it is extremely hard and if you don't like you've told me in the past the reason you didn't make it is not because you're not good enough it's because you you let the moments that you that could have been that moment that could have gotten you where you wanted to be right now, yeah. which I'm not saying it's not going to happen again, because if it happened that one time, it could possibly happen again for you, you know, especially as dedicated as you are just to this, sure. this lifestyle you have. 
but you did say it yourself, you know, you let them fly by you and it wasn't because you weren't good enough. And if you don't take chances, like you also told me, if you don't take chances and kind of, you're going to get, you're going to get shat on. <laughs> yeah. But whether you do it or not. <laughs> yeah. You know, so why not just do it? And I agree with you. I think that, like, if I had never come to film school, I wouldn't have made all the things that I am so happy and proud of now. Even if I'm not making money doing it, I'm making happiness. Yeah. I mean, you're getting a chance, an excuse to make something finally. You got all this time to do just that. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing to kind of catch on when you're in film school. You know, there's a lot of negative uh, things. Well, you don't need film school to learn it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can go online and learn a lot of this stuff, but you're kind of loose. You don't really yeah, know what to focus can on. Can you afford to buy all the equipment to use? Of course, you know, and, and you can You can get a phone and you can shoot a movie with that that looks cool and, and you can edit it on the phone. I don't know how great of a process that is. Oh, yeah, but, but you, know what a lens is. <laughs> you know, there's some things. Yeah, there's, just stuff there's a like that lot, I can... you know, um, I can and it just it helps to have a little bit of guidance, you know. It does. I had good guidance as far as theories and, and that kind of stuff, but I didn't have guides to show me how to make it in this world doing this craft. Yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. Um, and I wish I'd had. I might have changed some things about that. But, you know, that's just sort of the deal. There wasn't a lot of... Uh, when I was in college, it happened to be a time where they weren't really preparing mm -hmm. you for after college. You know, you're there, you're learning a lot, getting a degree. I was doing everything... You, thought of that's the right thing and then mm -hmm. boom I'm gonna get a job and I'll be able to support my family and all that well life's a little different than sort of these perceptions we, we come up with so I would love for you guys yeah. to find me a place to work once I leave and graduate <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> for myself <laughs> I, I would I mean, like to touch base on um, the movies and working at a movie a movie theater or just a movie store, which we don't, movie stores don't exist anymore unless you live in Alaska or something. There's some mama pops left. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna be one of them one day when I'm rich and I've already, like, I'm old and I'm like in my 60s. I'll be that, that person. <laughs> but anyway, so like when I was working at um, Blockbuster, first I was one of those people that walked into Blockbuster and got extremely too excited over walking in to a movie store. When I, if this was right when, I think Redbox had already been out, Netflix had already been out, I didn't care, I didn't notice, all I knew was there was my baby Blockbuster. You know, I had been wanting to work there since I was 10, I was promised a job when I turned 18 that I was going to be able to get a job there and she kept her word. She ended up not being that nice to me, but she actually did keep her word. Um, so, when I first started working there, I used to, you, you were being, you were having a conversation earlier about how you would always get the phone calls, hey, is this movie out? And it would be the same, then another person would call, is this movie out? And it might be even the same movie they're talking about. Which isn't, doesn't have a very interesting concept, like, it's not that interesting. But the most interesting thing about what I'm getting at is, you don't realize when you're sitting in there having a conversation with a complete stranger and you guys are really connecting and you're connecting over a movie because you realize in that moment you know so much about this person just knowing what they love about this movie and you, you, you realize if they're a bad person or a good person you realize a lot because you're, you're getting to know what they love the most. I mean when you watch a movie people give you their opinions you know, and they tell you what they liked about it, and especially scary movies, <laughs> that's when you really find the psychos. <laughs> and, but you know, it's like, <clears throat> I remember having the best conversations with people's faces that I'll never forget just because we sat there for hours, and that's what I loved about a job, you could sit there for hours talking to them. Unless you're talking about a movie, that's it, it's off. And I could do that, you know, and the, let's forget about the fact that there's all these beautiful movies just sitting everywhere around you. But yeah, like I'd have kids come in. We get to, you know, talk to the kids about what they liked. And, you know, like I said, you, you have, and I'm from, I was five minutes away from that place. You, you're kind of getting to know your community. I don't live in this little Stars Hollow era, you know, area like, you know, Gilmore Girls, but I lived in, I live in Durham, which so is a small area to me at least, and I got to know my community, I got to make friends, and you know, so movies are more than just the people that are in it that are making the money and having fun doing it. You're doing it for other people. And 
depending on who you are, I am. I'm doing it for myself, yes, but I'm also doing it for other people, so I do get upset. And I will say that I get upset when someone doesn't appreciate what I've made. And it's not just for them, it's for, for everybody. But, you know, it does start with yourself, and then it starts with your um, audience. So you have to have, you have to have more than one motive. But I, so I did get kind of butthurt every time I say, hey, do you like this movie? They're like, no, I didn't like it. And that's when I'm like, well, I don't like you now. <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> I think that goes for all of us to a certain degree. Yeah, it's like, wait, you don't like that movie? Okay. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. like, who are you? You haven't seen it? Oh, but that was another thing. It's just like... like you like that movie? Yeah. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Well, see, working there also was really great because when you're a movie lover, I'm like promoting Blockbuster and I don't really exist anymore. <laughs> when you're a movie lover, you're just like, you love it when people walk in and be like, do you know that there's this movie about this guy? Yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, no, there is. And I'm like, I need to watch that. And that becomes like my favorite movie of all time once I watch it. It's like that, I'll never forget that person. But again, that comes back to, it creates a happiness in life and inter the entertainment of it. And then you like fall in love with stars and you, you just, there's so much to it. But working at a movie store was probably the best job I ever had in my life. Not to mention the free movies mm -hmm. I got to rent. I got 10 free movies a week. Any movie, it could have just came out that day too. So you could imagine, I've, I've seen a lot, <laughs> a lot of movies. Well, in my experience with, uh, it was a little bit different. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I liked working in there and I liked, you know, there was some some things that you know, I liked working with the people who worked in uh, worked it with me. Uh, the uh, I was working. I was at college at the time, so I was kind of going back. You know, uh, I was working with a full, uh, going to school full schedule, and I was part time. But they started getting me in more hours than usual part time stuff, or whatever. So I got did get a little bit stressed out here and there because between the the things, and plus, like I said, I lived in. 45 minutes away from the store uh, from the store I worked at so that made a difference uh, the uh, but I did not get freebies we had to pay for our own videos this was a mom-and-pop store so it wasn't, wasn't a blockbuster it wasn't anything chain or anything like what that was it called? Stadler video okay. there's still a oh uh, well it, it was basically the uh, Stadler, uh, I guess it's still called Stadler Grocery. I'm not even sure if it's still called Stadler Grocery. It's still there. It's a convenience store. But there was a, uh, they had, back when, again, this was a term Jesse probably remembers. There were, uh, you could, there were some uh, convenience stores that would have VHS you could rent. Oh, yeah. Here and there. You could, uh, convenience sometimes stores? Convenience stores. Mm -hmm. And it would have video, uh, this early VHS stuff, you know. It sounds really familiar, actually. <laughs> Uh, you could do it at uh, grocery stores too. Some grocery mm -hmm. stores had uh, oh, yeah. uh, stuff you could rent. Um, but anyway, uh, they had videos at one time in the convenience store itself. But then they decided, hey, let's open a separate thing. And there was a building, a little bit dis, you know, kind of like you know, a few feet from the store that had been used for something else or whatever at one time. And they apparently, I guess they owned it or whatever. Uh, so they made that building into a video store. A regular selling video store, so that, and that's when I started working there. Did people rent them or they buy bought them? What? What do you mean? They rented them, right? Yeah, it was all. We had, we had. They did pull out like so occasionally some movies that they you could buy. We could buy whatever. Did it like? Did it work like where? Because I know you said you wrote it down. You didn't have a system. Was it like if you would make it? Um, like, did they have like a specific day that you had to bring it back, and then yeah. you would check it off when they brought it back, so they could get another Basically, movie? to a to a certain point, yeah. Uh, but then it wound up being like you didn't know because uh, they would nobody would check that or like you. It was written down on a piece slip of paper or whatever, and saved in with all these other papers, papers in a in a uh, clip a uh, uh, clip or whatever, and. Uh, for one day, and then you know they would be set up for one day, and then the next day, and so on and so on. And uh, but then there would be people, because again, this is mom and pop. We're not computerized. We're not doing any of this. There would be people who would let other people, the same people, rent more or whatever, and all this other stuff than they should have, because they're buddy, they they're maybe story. buddies, or they know each other, you know, whatever type thing. There would be some of that stuff going on. There would be. Um, 
uh, which probably may happen at Blockbuster, you just didn't know, you know, like I said, they just did a computer, figure, figure negative with a computer a little bit, but, um. Like they would let somebody else bring the movie back? Yeah, I mean, because people would bring back movies, but they wouldn't let you check to see if it was late or not, and then they'd walk out the door or whatever type of thing. That happened to a lot. Um. Where they would, or they would let their kid come in and bring the video. Oh, God, we had that happen. <laughs> I'm like, uh, and I'm like, okay. you know, come on, people. <laughs> um, you know, how, well, I was say, get, uh, how, you know, you know, really, you know, pre your kid and bringing, a, you know, a late video in. I mean, like I said, really, how. My favorite, know. my favorite thing was when they were late, they had a late fee, and then it was like one person one time had like a hundred dollar late fee, and I was like, well, I mean, you can't rent anything until you pay yeah, it, and right. then we, cause that was that how you guys were. Well, <laughs> they like to have it done that, but they can't do, they can't, the, it depended on if you got, if that person, like I said, if you had the slip of paper, they had the, uh, well, if you had proof, if you had proof, there again, well, sometimes that would happen, would happen. You could totally, like, be like, I brought that back, you didn't write that down. Right. I mean, you know. And there were times do. where somebody didn't write down a number, because each one of them was numbered, each video was numbered by a certain amount of numbers. And you wrote those numbers down on that slip of paper, like yeah. the paper. A paper, it wouldn't. It wasn't just a like scrap sheet of paper. It was you know kind of like a printed out copy of the paper, but it was a really small, about that size. Um, and uh, they uh, tend, uh, they would have had lines on there, you know, like one through six, whatever, and you wrote the number of that movie, whatever it is, on that line. Mm -hmm. You didn't you did give a name of the movie, it was the number of the movie, whatever. No, it was like the, uh, like a serial number of them. And Something like yeah. that, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so, but you know, it, it, it just got, you know, I mean, there were some, you know, problems here and there too. I mean, like I said, it was just like, you had a easier, I mean, I don't want to say easier way, but being it just like. I did. You I had, you, you. Well, I mean, you, you had an easier way because you, you could, you know, scan something and, yeah, or scan their card and they could. Sometimes we really had an old system because I remember when I started Blockbuster, they had, they, I mean, I think they had already kind of figured they were going to close soon. But I had been there for a little over a year, and mm -hmm. oh, hell, they didn't pay nothing. But I loved working there. But anyways, uh, yeah, like their system sucked. They were just some douchebags that worked there, man. There's some douchebags. It's like being in the film industry when you work there. I don't think there was one person I worked with. Okay, no, there was. I saw a bit of Food Line the other day that I actually liked. Maybe two. And I didn't actually physically work with them. It was a different story. Yeah. But anyways, yes. I liked the people I worked with. I think as I liked the people I worked with. It was just the bad people that you know came in there. To, to rent, whatever. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, plus, like I said, I was going through school, going through, you know, like I said, it would have been a different maybe experience had I lived nearby in that case, in that way, in that way, you know, whatever. Did you guys type thing. commercial, but, like, did you guys, like, do they have, like, I don't know what the term is for it, but when... You know, like Blockbuster, they would get the new rentals. Right. Did you guys get new rentals and get like posters and stuff from like sent to you guys for free? We we would get the new rentals, but like remember I told you about that T-shirt or whatever. That was something that was kind of sent or whatever. From that, the movie people, yeah. Yeah, you know, or that. But they, we didn't get much of anything. I mean, sometimes I think they sent posters, but they you know would put them up or whatever in the you know store or whatever. But. It was very few and far between. Uh, if you know, like I said, I, ne I never dealt with that all that stuff. That uh, the woman who worked full time there, because everybody else was part time, she yeah. was the only full time person. Uh, she worked Monday through Friday, you know, whenever in the morning to the evening or whatever. Because we took over the night or whatever, and we were always most of the time, unless it was a Friday night and a Saturday night, we worked alone. Yeah, believe it or not. I feel you. So. <laughs> and uh, so, and it Tuesday nights, at the beginning, they had Tuesday nights us being alone. But then after a while, they figured out, hey, y'all are busy on Tuesday nights because you know the new videos came out then. And so. Wow, they did it on Tuesday nights then too. Yeah. Right God, the that's beginning. been a thing for years then. Because it's every Tuesday. Yeah. So it was, wow. and then then they started putting another person on Tuesday nights with two people on Tuesday nights because it was busy. The phone would ring off the hook. Like I said, people calling on about new videos and all that stuff. And for some reason, people were so intense. And I, I guess they might not be that way now as much. There are probably some people no, out there. They were. But, but 
they're, but they're not probably near as much as they used to be then. Everybody had this intent in their mind saying they got to see that movie but you know, first. I'm like, who cares if you see the movie a week later or you know th that night it comes out? I mean, who cares? You know, there just a, like really, is that gonna impress anybody or something? There was a time when I first started, and before I even started Blockbuster, I was 18 in 2000. And was it 10? Yeah, I was 18 in 2010. I think I'm 25. So uh, I, know, I know, I know. But anyways. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! I'm, I'm young like that. Young geez. But anyways, it's a good thing I am young. So, but what I remember before that, like early 2000s, when I'd go with my mom to Blockbuster, it was super cheap. It was like 99 cent for older movies. Anything past like 2000 and something was so it was 99 cent. When I started there, it remained 99 cent. In fact, I don't even think it was 99 cent. No, it was because it went up to a dollar and some change. But if it was super old, it might have been 99 cent. So. But right when I quit, I did quit Blockbuster before they closed because I remember I couldn't afford to work there anymore. <laughs> it was right before they closed, though. They had upped the price to $5. It was actually almost $6 to rent one movie for three nights or two nights, something like that. When I was working there, not even two months earlier than that, it was $2 and some change for a brand new movie that just came out. Which, granted, if you go to like Redbox, you're paying only a dollar or two dollars yeah. for a brand new movie, so it's just pretty good. It's reasonable, yeah. which is why they had to do that because they couldn't afford to pay their bills, I think. But it was just unbelievable. But I remember when it was cheaper and we were extremely busy. That problem you just said you had, where it's like people were fighting. We did like we would have. I remember we'd have stacks of movies about this thick on walls, and we'd have maybe like like five you know, shelves of the brand new movie, like, okay, um, Haywire, Haywire, yeah, when it came I know, out, I know the movie that too. was, you know, it was a Haywire, yeah, yeah, it was like this action movie, mm -hmm. I remember thick copies of it, and Conan, down yeah. there, it came out in 2011, because I, actually I worked there in 2011, right. but anyways, I remember, and they would be gone after one day, Right. People were just coming in, and I mean, uh, the, I mean, I would the, the I don't know why. Why is it such a big? Now I can I can understand somebody going to a movie theater and wanting to see a movie. Try to be as first, you know, not first, but like early as possible when it comes at, first comes out of the theater. Yeah, I would understand that because in this culture now, what you can you hear a lot of spoilers. Like a day or so after you, hear, you know, you see the, you know, the movie comes out, yeah. and you don't want to hear the spoilers because you want, you know, some people don't want to hear spoilers or whatever. So I kind of understand that concept or whatever. But a movie that's been rented out, I don't understand that. Okay. I never understood that then, and I still don't understand it now. Well, the only thing I do have this to say is ninety three. This is ninety three. Well, at ninety three, I mean, it's the same is, color. People yeah. don't really change that much. I, I'm one of those people. Like, I would have been the first. I wouldn't beat anybody up over or cuss anybody out about it. It wasn't that about it. It's just like people. Would I was say bummed this out. Like, I'd be bummed yeah. out if I was like, oh man, look, because like, they would have the covers. You remember when they'd have the covers? I'd be like, look, there's one left. Yeah. And I'd go up and I'd run up to it and there was nothing. It was just a cover. <laughs> I was like, damn it. And, you know, it's like, you get yeah. excited because you're ready for this movie. They pump it, they make you, in, in the, when you watch TV, like excited to watch this movie and you're like, I gotta wait another freaking fracking day to watch it? Really? Well, <laughs> You know, <laughs> but I don't understand. It's still, that I, I don't understand that whole. Kind of, you can watch it maybe a day later. You know that kind of thing. You know, it's just that, that I don't understand it's that. It's a disappointment that, oh. of it. It's not the fact that you don't get to watch it that but day. It's it, just you're disappointed. Like your just, dreams are crushed. But I just like uh, um, because the the one of the women that used to come in there, it would be women or male. It didn't matter what you know what sex you were. You heard the same almost similar things. Uh, but that they would come. Uh, there was one woman who said this. Like I said, this is you know 1993. She said that she stood outside a Blockbuster in Greensboro because this is at the time we only had two video stores in the town. I lived in a small town, yeah. so uh, so, and she stood outside a Blockbuster in Greensboro, which is 20 miles away, um, um, the, uh, to get rent uh, to get that to. Make sure she got to rent a movie out. What that movie day. was it? Do you I remember? don't remember what it was, Damn. but it was just like, <laughs> it's just like to me, it didn't matter what movie it was. It's just like to me, it was just like 
people need to I mean, get no, freaking life. Yeah. You know, I would like, like, never they, do that. But that's like what they told Dance you. with Wolves or Titanic or uh, no, 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 no. This is way too early for that. This is nineteen ninety three. But it, you kind of was maybe, but, but did you guys ever have a kid section? Did you guys have sections? We had kid section. We had you did. Kids, like, so you had like there. horror and drama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, did you ever have it like on Friday nights where families would come in and they would just like run around well, see, and eat some candy? You, as you told it, as you told, uh, well, we didn't have a lot of candy. Well, we had actually we didn't have candy in there. But uh, as you were saying, like uh, the amount of uh, at one time when I first started there, we were only doing one night rentals. Oh, so yeah. it was a dollar, like a dollar or nine cents or something like that rental for uh, a night for one night, and see so that's what it was at the, at the time too. That that there was places like that that were only one. Blockbuster really kind of spurred that. Oh, well, maybe not just Blockbuster, but other you know like bigger franchises mm-hmm. spurred that two a night or two for or one you can rent for two nights it's or three nights or whatever that is. Nights. Yeah, that's but what we have. We used to be one night. All these places was always one night. Now there would be some places that would have, if you rented it on a Saturday, maybe a Friday night, you could keep it through the weekend. Yeah. Maybe if you did it, you'd have to rent it on Friday or Saturday night to do that. Uh, some of this, I think a lot of the policies you had, we had at one point, you know, I was very young, I would have known, but Blockbuster really came a long way over the years, especially the more in the later 2000s it went, when they yeah. knew they were going to be closing if they right. didn't do something differently because yeah. they had Redbox coming, demand was killing us. Yeah. You know, I remember we were dying before I even got the job. <laughs> our, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I remember going to Blockbuster during the early 2000s and being dead in there, like nobody was in there. I mean, it depends on what area you were in. Yeah. Because I have been, I worked at a lot of different Blockbusters. I worked at uh-huh. five different ones and I closed five different <laughs> ones. <laughs> I closed the one in Roxborough, the uh-huh. one at Hillsboro, Durham, you, uh, Charlotte. Not Charlotte, uh, Raleigh. Two, there was two in Raleigh that I closed. So I closed a lot of them. It was depressing. Right when I started, my first day on the job, I closed the one in Roxborough. I was depressed. I was like, well, this is awesome. My first day on the job, I'm closing <laughs> the store, helping them clean up. It, it's funny. You know, you think, you know, we're in the filmmakers and stuff. You think of going to the theater to do it. But mm-hmm. honestly, a lot of my early viewing stuff, and I did go to the theater some, but it was expensive. Yeah. Um, what was the nice thing about renting videotapes and stuff like that was cheap as heck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I never had cable or anything like that. But when I was a teeny tiny tyke, this little package store called Peanuts opened up. Or I guess it, it seemed like it had always been there. It was like a shack. Like, <laughs> it just a shack. It's like it's somebody's abandoned shack somewhere <laughs> on Main Street. But it's, it's Peanuts, and you could get, I think you could get candy, and maybe they had, like, cigarettes and cigars and stuff but mainly it was all like uh like videotapes from the day and i remember going there and and getting some of my first tapes and i remember all of it like uh the first time i saw night of living dead i got from there and i remember that because it that movie really bothered me my mom didn't watch it with me of course she was in the kitchen you know doing whatever my dad was at home it was overcast and so i watched that movie and i had to go every once in a while leave and go to the kitchen just to kind of get away from the horror that I that I saw, but yeah. I remember that, and I remember being really super excited about getting any kind of movie I could from there. And there's a lot of stuff I wasn't allowed to get, but they had the posters up. Like I remember uh, the poster for Texas Chainsaw Massacre two up there, and I just was fascinated by those kind of movies. I wanted to see them really badly, but I wasn't allowed to. <laughs> and when I was older, I did get to do that, you know. But when when uh, our first. We got our first VCR. We got got it at a uh, video, uh, like a uh, electronic store in town, and we got our. We were able to get it, it when they got my parents went and got it for us. We were went. I think we were in school that day, and uh, they went to uh, play that place to get a, a, our first VCR, and uh, the, they had a video store in that electronic store, and that was. Uh, the first video store I remember because you know going to a lot and but they they there was like I think you if you again if you rented something on Fridays it was you had it through the weekend or something like that but their stuff was like you know at night one night you know whatever type thing Monday through Thursday I guess um so um but uh but uh that uh 
But we had you had to pay for a membership there if you didn't get it. They bought the VCR, so they got a free membership. Mm-hmm. But you used to have to pay for memberships or whatever other stuff too. Yeah. Well, it was free. It was free. Yeah. yeah. But uh, in the earlier days of renting, I used to have a few cards from some of those things. It was kind of. But kind of I remember it was a cob. It's not there anymore. The building's still there. I think there's something else now, but. It's not there anymore. The store, the video, or the mm-hmm. electronic store, or whatever. But right, there's still um, a few holdouts. Um, where at? There's more, there's a video store on Spring Garden in um, Greensboro. It's there near it UNCG's campus. Um, there's a Walgreens and a Jake's Billiards. It's along that little drag between Acock and Chapman. Spring Garden between Acock and Chapman. There's one in there. I was over there the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, still there. I couldn't believe it. It's filled with stuff. And then I went to this uh, screening uh, near Charlotte, and it was at a Vizart video, which used to be a sort of small chain, but this one's still there, and it's really decked out nice. Oh, it's a huge room, huge space with, like, wall-to-wall VHS stuff there, but they also had a really nice decked-out screening room in the back where you could have, like, a small festival and things like that. No, it's, now they do they have neat. VHS tapes or whatever? VHS. Or it, uh, both. Yeah. It's a mix. But they, they, they have a lot. Of, yeah, they, they rent. So, but they, they have stuff for sale these? too. But Oh, yeah. I wonder how that works because if Blockbuster isn't alive anymore, why the hell do they get to do it? We, I mean, there's still some movies that make some no. things. It's just less. You uh, know. That's uh, well, I thought if it was DVDs that maybe that, like you said, the one that's kind of close to the UNCG mm-hmm. campus, that could be, if they did DVDs, they could right. probably get some of the students. I think they, got, the student, they have the both. Students, yeah. The students that are around there, they, could, sure. they have laptops probably or something like that right. they can play DVDs on or whatever. Older laptops. It's funny, newer laptops don't even have drives. <laughs> really? Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. Okay, so I'm, well, I'm yeah, way yeah, behind exactly. on this stuff for now. Yeah, yeah, you would think. It's hard to find disk drives but, now. You but, can buy the portable things. Though. Yeah. Yeah. But I would thought that maybe because college students sometimes get a laptop for you know right. to go into college with mm-hmm. or whatever, and that would um, and there's a weird thing like they could get some money from there. Folks our age kind of become VHS files. Like I've got a couple of friends who have a stack of brand new VCRs in their closets, and they like mm-hmm. watching the tapes. They I love would... it. There's something about like. <laughs> My tattoo artist is like that. You know, they're kind of, yeah. I, have, they're, they're I like still that. have some yeah. tapes, but most mm-hmm. of my tapes are uh, either uh, movies or something that's on there that is not even put out on DVDs. Right. They never did it on DVDs. Right. So I've kept it, kept them on, you know, kept the tape or whatever. Right. And some of it's like, uh, but most of mine is VHS stuff that I taped off of television. Right. I have a lot of and that that's too. interesting. <laughs> that's interesting to me to put on there because you see old commercials, you see yes, old uh, the way the promos for the tele, you know, the oh, networks yeah. and all that stuff. And it's just stuff that interests me for something. Now, nobody else probably does it, but I mean, because I even look on YouTube a well, lot. It's a little nostalgic too. Yeah. I look on YouTube a lot for like old, old network promos or uh, like local television oh, have, promos or something like that. Oh, they'll have a lot of edited together commercials like yeah. in a row on yeah, YouTube. And, That's kind of nice. And I look at some of that stuff and they're just saying, oh man, I remember that commercial. I remember how that was then, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Oh my God, old McDonald's like, commercials, they were true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, did you watch that new McDonald's, The Founder? It was yeah. really messed up. Oh, yeah, up. that's a Pens good movie. It was a great movie, but it was yeah. messed up. Oh. I was mad at him. I was like, yeah. I don't give it away. I mean, guy. big business. Yeah. But well played. That guy was, was uh, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with Keaton. Like, what a great actor yeah. that guy is. I just feel like he You feel bad for the, 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 the two dudes, the, the brothers, brothers that started it, you know? Like, they and I wonder what those that. sandwiches tasted like back then. They looked like they tasted amazing. They, you know, a, bit, yeah. a little different than, yeah. you know. Probably now. healthier. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah, everything was healthier uh-huh. then. Even the bad stuff was much healthier than oh, some God, of the healthier yeah. stuff. Now. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that, I mean that's what I know. That, that's interesting to me to see that some of that stuff because I was watching that. I found my videotapes and I kind of threw away some of my movies or whatever because I already had on DVD. And right. I wasn't really ever probably gonna ever watch them on because right. again, find a VHS player is right kind of hard to mm-hmm. find. But. Um, I did have a VHS player, but you know I knew they wound. You know, because I, I can understand that kind of thing. But watching a movie, let's say, just for instance, Ghostbusters, right? The original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Just you know, I'm just throwing out a movie, right? Uh, watching that on a VHS and and then 
I don't know. I just well, the quality's gonna be degraded. That's yeah. one of the things. But some people kind of like. I think they like those little like problems that tape has. Mm-hmm. Like, no one can ever fr- remember like tracking it'd be like the best part yeah. of the movie and it'd be yeah. like yeah. it'd be sideways and you could see tracking flashing yeah. on it like it would try yeah. to get it right oh uh, yeah know. i don't i don't again I don't that, doesn't, that. that doesn't appeal to me i don't <laughs> me know either. Right. it does not appeal to me either i yeah, mean yeah. like like cassette tapes i mean i know i'm getting off movies but like cassette tapes from music cassette tapes and uh-huh. all that stuff i can't imagine going back to that either oh right right dvd was so i mean cd CDs. was great yeah. Yeah. yeah i hated when I was a kid, because, you know, it was not until I was in 2002 or three when my mom really started buying movies. And I remember getting up to rewind Rugrats, and I'd be like, I'm so tired of getting up. Because, you know, I told you, I rewatched the same movie over and over again. You know, even as a child, I still do it. Yeah. They'll see me press replay forever. But I have to get up and hold the button. Or you didn't have a... No, remote. for some reason we didn't have one. We had the same one for what feels like my whole life. Right. Okay, well, yeah. Some older That's ones didn't have remote. remotes. They just no, they didn't. The co- yeah. built onto the console. And then you would forget yeah. to rewind it. And I was not one of those kids that rewinded it so that the next time one or I was my young. And mom would get so mad. <laughs> she gets so mad. She'd be like, you didn't rewind it. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did y'all ever have those little speed rewinders? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you have to buy those separately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they so did, you didn't they, wear out your VCR. They, but, oh they, my God. but those would wear out like in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you used them at the that. store. Yeah. Oh my God. We, the we use them at the store. My our grandma store still has it. Uh, she still yeah. has one. It's like it was just like for just a single, and then you just yeah. rewind. Yeah. Oh my God. That's it. <laughs> Man. Ours would yeah. or the store or at the store would ours would. Mm-hmm. Like uh, mess up in a heartbeat or whatever. It's, type of thing. it's a weird thing. There's a small group of people that really like it. A buddy of mine, he's he's editing his second documentary on mom and pop video stores. I mean, I I find it interesting. Like, oh, yeah. I would watch, uh, watch watch that documentary without any yeah yeah of, yeah. Uh, any, but just like it's I don't know, about the video. <laughs> VHS tapes. It's I just, got a few left in a box somewhere. We got my first movie the, yeah. on Super VHS yeah. in a hard shell case. Oh, I mean, wow. they're, they're made, yeah. like when the the Charlotte Hornets, which they are a team now, they're Charlotte Hornets now. But at one time, they were Charlotte Hornets back when they first started. Back when I was a sophomore in high school, oh, yeah. I was a diehard fan of them. They just started NBA, got into the NBA, learned all about the NBA, learned all about the teams. I'm I'm one of those, you know, if I'm if I like something, I'm jumping full in, in, full yeah, in. Yeah. And I'm learning about all the teams I'm learning about and all the who's on this and who's that. And this is, you know, like I said, in the 80, 88 or whatever type of uh, type, uh, time brain. And they just started the Charlotte Hornets, new team. They sucked. <laughs> they would only win 20 games the first season, but I didn't care. I was dying. And nobody cared because oh, yeah. everybody loved them, too. Because that's the thing about it. They had a huge fan base. Kids in your school all have the shirts. And yeah, all I wore stuff. I, wore, yeah, yeah. I got. Two, I still got two or three shirts that mm. I bought. Uh, got I think even I was not a sports time. fan. I think I even have a Charlotte everybody shirt. Everybody was jump, right? jumped on because everybody was for the ACC at the time. So mm. everybody, when they said, oh, more basketball, well, let's jump on this. And right. so I guess I'm assuming that's kind of why. In I North started. Carolina, we got a pro team. Yeah, we got. Well, yeah, that was our first pro team that yeah. we had in the Panthers state. came about 10 years later, right? Yeah. Huh? Panthers came about 10, yeah. 10 15 years later. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, but yeah, it was later. But that was our first pro team, so we were just like everybody. Yeah. I think everybody just clammed on to that, and I I was a diehard fan. I watched every they showed they showed every away game, almost every away game, on uh, uh, Independence Station mm-hmm. around here, uh, uh, and so I watched every game. You know, and mm-hmm. I was a huge basketball fan. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, well, was I going with this? But anyway. Um, well, just but I, how people are interested in these yeah. kind of things. But but okay, I went in because I still have the VHS tape because I I went in and uh, there's a VHS of basically their start. It's right. kind of like a documentary type thing of their start. Right. And I got it through. Uh, 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 I became uh, like a member of their club, uh, club or whatever. You could right. you could you know send in a thing. You can be a member of their club. You know a right. fan club. Or whatever I guess you sure. say more. I mean, and they sent you a VHS tape of that, and I still have that because I know they never put it on DVD because this would, this was '88 when this happened, so um, I know they never put it on DVD. But I, but like I said, something like that I I have still on tape. 
But, um, but I mean, I can understand maybe even kind of nostalgia type that's, because the funny thing about it is, speaking of nostalgia and VHS, on YouTube, I found um, a video of them showing commercials through, uh, uh, of a movie uh, when Ghostbusters was on ABC, I think. They showed Ghostbusters, the first Ghostbusters on ABC 20 billion years ago. Right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they, uh, they, they, I remember us, we, had, we taped it off there. And I remember that night. It was like it was like a middle of the week too. It wasn't even like like Sunday nights, even mm -hmm. where they did Sunday nights and Monday night movies right, or whatever. Right. The networks would do that. And um, but now this was like in the middle of the week or something like that. Anyway, it was something really different than they did. But anyway, we taped it. We taped it off there. And I remember we watching it because I like the Ghostbusters a lot. We watching it and we watching it. They have the commercials and all that stuff from that on, on one of the videos or whatever that I saw on YouTube. They have the commercials and stuff like that from that mm -hmm. time frame, whatever. Because they you cause, remember because it says we'll be back with you know Ghostbusters after this minute you know whatever type thing when they went to commercial or whatever and they show they have that. I'm like I remember that because we had that video. We had you tape. remember being watching that when it was yeah. actually coming on? Yeah, and that's so, I mean, trippy. And it's just you no, know, it's just commercials. It's just you know promos for the network. It's not a big deal. You know, it's like to me it's a big deal, but for somebody else it's like what you know what it's just commercials. You know, it's just whatever. And it's just to me it's just like nostalgia. Really, it's nostalgia. Oh, nostalgia. I mean, it's just like silly nostalgia whatever but it's like nostalgia whatever type thing but yeah um but cause that was one of those times where they had the movie like you were just saying about the way that uh it was shot whatever type thing where they had one scene where they were in the elevator i'm not sure if you all remember this in the movie where they're standing in the elevator and they're going up this is their first job mm -hmm. and they're like saying they're talking about they haven't Tested the equipment or whatever type thing oh yeah and they're they're like and you see harold ramus is off camera because of the the pan the, scan the pan scan thing mm -hmm. of it or whatever because this was you know matrix or this was put on t television right. or whatever and so you see you don't even you hear him talking but you don't, you don't see, see him on the screen you <laughs> show me a pan scan thing at some point sure because i need to visually see this because i oh, yeah. feel it, like i know what you're talking about it's funny to see that any movie that you had at your video store that didn't have the black lines on the top and the bottom uh -huh. that's pan and scan oh so basically if you don't put the crop well, it's not. It's uncropped. The pan and scan mm. is cropped, actually. The Weird. the black lines that allows you to see the full image yeah. that was shot that you see in the theater. Oh. But because people were used to TV without that, they did. The, there's a machine mm. where you can create a new version of that movie, but you pick what falls into that three by four aspect ratio, right. uh -huh. as opposed to the twenty two. You know, the Academy whatever sizes they had which were all widescreen you know, watch a david lean movie which just yeah. goes on forever you know yeah. but then they'll just like zero in on this tiny right. little part of the <laughs> which, image which yeah. it's kind of fun too because in the scene you know they have him like they say they have you know test the equipment and i and i blame myself of course that you know and i said i do too whatever. and bill and then they turn and he said okay switch me in and I, like down awkward says switch me in and they just Oh, and they move, they cut it back. And off. Bo both Bill Murray and Harris Ramis kind of move back from him or whatever as much as they can because it sounds like it goes oh, yeah. like that, because like, yeah. it's like a nuclear accelerator. And they're all kind of like or whatever type thing. <laughs> but you, it doesn't, it kind of takes that out of it because you just see Bill Murray kind of get gathering back or whatever. Right. You don't see Harold Ramis kind of doing I need it to too. Watch this. Find it, it's, find it, so I can watch it with you. <laughs> I don't, it, I, it's I don't, hard to find I, pan and scan. Yeah, I don't know if they're so used to. I don't know if they, they may have YouTube yeah, yeah. on some. I just, true. I, like I only found the commercials and the you know saying goodbye you know and, and the promos of the commercial. See, yeah. that's the thing about it too is that I remember I like seeing commercials. Not necessarily the commercials itself. It's the promos for the television shows that are on the network. However, that to me makes me you know, oh, yeah. nostalgic too because it's yeah, just like I sure. remember that episode. And I remember watching that episode then, you know, whatever, you know, it's just like, it's silly. It's really silly and stupid. But the funny thing about it is that there's a lot of comments underneath, because they show, it, it, networks used to uh, used to own their own television sh or own shows. I mean, they used to have people who would do promos. They, they're, the actors in the uh, in the television shows did promos for the network. Right. Now they don't own they don't uh, like other people own the shows, but they show the show on there. Not not all of them, but most of them they do now is different because now because of the because they show 
like I remember you seeing like little things like segments of them I mean maybe the actors would be dancing in some sort of dance number or whatever mm -hmm. for the network or something like that ABC da, 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 oh, yeah. whatever you know, whatever the network it was and would be doing something and they'd be doing crazy stuff and like these are actors who are on these television shows that are on but the network they make these little like bumpers and promos huh? they make these little bumpers or promos yeah. while they're and they yeah, would yeah, be doing a Disney dance Channel number maybe they're doing a this maybe doing yeah, that or, Raven. and yeah. sometimes yeah. they'd have it in the corner they'd have yeah. the regular show and then you'd see the little promo happening yeah, at the or, bottom yeah and, I mean you know, just all this I mean they'd have this especially at the beginning of seasons when this you know fall season would come around they would just huge promo with this big band and the, the actors oh, are on yeah. the shows will be dancing and doing all this stuff. Right. And it's funny thing about it is to see the comments at below. You see this stuff. You can find it on YouTube. And you see this comments below and they said, this is back when networks actually, <laughs> you know, liked their shows, promoted their shows right. and all this stuff. You know, oh, back yeah. when, and they don't do that stuff. No, they just no exist. promo. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, okay, you know, here it is, a la carte on Netflix or Hulu or whatever you're watching. I'm telling yeah. you, man. Well, it's so funny because that's before you even said that, I was thinking of like when I was a kid and I was addicted to like Disney Channel, which right. I know that that was my time, was Disney Channel. It was neat. It, yeah, it was great. Like, yeah. That's a Raven, Boy Meets World. You know, mm -hmm. I love Boy Meets World. Mm -hmm. But um, all those great shows and you're just like, because um, like they would do the thing like this. And they would be at the bottom because they would do the Disney, the mm -hmm. um, Mickey Mouse head. Mm -hmm. Remember what I was talking about? I don't know if you ever watched it or not. Just yeah. glanced at it. Mm -hmm. And they would be at the bottom and it would be the different characters from different shows, but not the same show. Right. So I feel like I, I know what you're saying. Like it, yeah, it, it's yeah. kind of similar to that. Mm -hmm. The channel. Yeah. 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 I know what you're talking about, but it, it's kind of similar to that, what they did. You know, they, mm -hmm. but, you know, and, um, yeah, I mean, so, because, but this was back, like I said, it was, this is funny to see that, because this is stuff from the 70s, right. 80s, and stuff like that time frame, mm -hmm. and it's like, they had no, you know, like I said, the people were getting paid, so they had it's no problem a, doing stuff. <laughs> that's a commercial for their show. Yeah. You know, that they're, that so, they're doing, I mean, yeah. I mean, but it's just like, uh, I mean, I think Robin Williams was, because he was, Mork and Mindy was on, mm -hmm. so he had to do promos too, whatever for that. Right. This was before he was huge. Or he was huge, mm -hmm. and you know, this seeing stuff like that was kind of funny to see. Yeah, Mark again. and Mindy was one of the first shows I remember watching with my parents and stuff way back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so uh, <laughs> I know I went. I'm sorry, I went completely off. Oh, that's the okay. That's okay. We had a, we've having a had a good show. Um, I'm thinking maybe we're kind of close to wrapping it up. We we started off talking about a lot of our own experiences on sets and 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 coming up with ideas for stuff, and then. We uh, segued on to uh, to actually, it's kind of cool uh, into video stores and that whole phenomena of how you know how that affected us. All of us rented rented mm -hmm. stuff from those kind of stores. To you two worked at them, mm -hmm. which is which is pretty cool. I always wanted to work at one, but never <laughs> never happened. You know, because um, well, you're surrounded by all this like candy, you know, <laughs> movies yeah. and real candy, uh -huh. and real which candy. was fun yeah. too. Yeah. 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 One more thing about that: there is a movie ca uh, called Be Kind Rewind. Ah, uh, yeah. Which is Jack Black is in it, and uh, I can't remember who else is in it, but Jack Black is in it, and it's a pretty decent movie. I thought it was it'd be better than it was, but that was just me. But it's kind of, it's it's kind of a funny mm. thing because it's like Michel Gondry was the director, I believe. On okay, that. French guy, yeah. Okay, have you seen it? I've seen bits of it. I've okay. seen others of Gondry's stuff. They're very similar. Yeah, the concept of them is they have all these messed up tapes, and so they they film each uh, they film certain scenes from movies. They recreate or whatever, them, yeah. They recreate the movies or whatever, and they start and like people start liking it mm. around the neighborhoods and they there's a term for that you know what it is mm. sweeting i never oh, knew yeah. what that was but that was that film sweeted i'm like what does that mean sweeted s w e d e d it has it's an actual sweden oh, yeah. you know mm. but it's uh they call it sweeted you know where they're redoing where yeah. they're redoing that or whatever. Well, I'm so confused by that movies. term. Yeah, they you know? redo movies and all, and they bring out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a decent movie. It, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. I thought, right. Because I was really intent on seeing it. Really, you know, like right. a really good movie. But nah, it was it was okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, maybe I was thinking of more of it being just. Same, can similar thing to Clerks or whatever, but just in the you know, right. Yeah, it was. A, but it that, wasn't that. Guy, that. It, yeah, wasn't no, that. it wasn't that. That guy's that. way more in the fantasy world yeah. and stuff, and I could see how it could drift there. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were some puppets involved eventually. <laughs> in things. But yeah. it was. But like I said, uh, well, see, that's why I connected with Clerks because 
they had a video store yeah. and a convenience store right beside each other. It's very true to life, people. normal conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It almost seemed like the, the, the video camera was, was basically the security camera. And I liked the way he put the camera over because it looked like it was a security camera of the store. Right. Than a, a regular camera. It seemed to me. Anyway. Right. Not in a... Well, that's else. probably what... They kind of had that idea. They yeah. used the video camera that's there at the store to make the movie. <laughs> right. Because he placed... You know, I, I like that way because it just looked like a really, you know, a everyday situation in right. the convenience store. But... um in the video store is pretty funny too some of the segments in that too but anyway i'm sorry you were oh you're fine you're fine that's okay um (laughs) you know this is a very kind of we're not under any kind of major deadline or anything like that i'm just summarizing um but there is sort of that leftover i mean a few generations from now no one's going to know what a vcr is or a vhs tape is or any of that kind of stuff you know it's going to go the way of... And he uh, might not know anything about that. Yeah, She's yeah, you know, and we're close about. to the time where what's a DVD, you know? <laughs> no, Blu-rays no. kind of tried to happen, but it's all superseded by online streaming. I like a good Blu-ray because it's really good quality yeah, and you can just talking about yeah, see, about. you know, every pore. <laughs> and I'm you. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, you know, that's... I mean, hopefully they still kind of keep... Uh, at least I think they'll be there. around, you know. Yeah, and, you know, not. records are still around, which records even yeah. had sort of a resurgence. Well, but, yeah, vinyls come back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, my friend loves those. Oh, yeah. And people like get these really nice hi-fi sets for their houses. That's what I bought him <laughs> one for Christmas. Yeah, nice, yeah. nice. All right, and that's it uh, for this uh, installment of the P One Fourteen Filmmakers Podcast. Uh, Keep on watching and keep on commenting, and uh, maybe next week we'll have another one. Take care. Mm-hmm.